Hi, this is Dave Anderson from Helicool's Helipad. Don't you just hate getting electrocuted? Ah, God, son of a... And I just get all excited when the lights go out. Um, because these are a multicolor light that So what can you do about it? Well, there's a couple things. One, you can educate yourself on the type of plug that you're using and how many amps it is actually capable of sending through the wire. And you can do a little bit of preventive maintenance on your extension cords. So you go to the store and you buy the thickest, biggest extension cord that you possibly can. I mean, this is like eight gauge wire inside i mean it's a monster and this thing costs over a hundred dollars you think man i can be able to transfer a whole lot of juice through this thing no problem and and then you look at the the tag and it says hey this is rated for 15 amps wait a minute this is monster cable 15 amps are you crazy this is gonna this is this will take a whole lot more than that 15 amps, that's nothing. Heck, I got 20 amps going to my to my uh, plug-ins and my circuit breaker. So it, it's got to be a whole lot more than that. As a matter of fact, you go to the aisle where it has all the wire and you look up 8-gauge wire and you look, hey, that, that thing can go like 50 amps. So I should be good to go, right? Wrong. The weak point of any electrical cable is actually the connector. This is some heavy duty stuff. Uh, but it's only rated for 110, 110 volts. So you're like, wait a minute, why is, uh, why is this so monstrous, but it's only rated for 110? Well, it's rated for a whole lot more amps because amps is what's actually pushing the electricity. If you try to push 20 amps through a small electrical cord, that has the small prongs, this is what's gonna happen. You see how this edge, this, this prong got zorched? Okay, there's only this amount of electrical connecting onto uh, the, the female part of the plug, and there's too much electricity trying to get pumped through this thing, and so what it ends up doing over time is it ends up zorching your plug. Now this is about the most ridiculous thing invention I've ever seen here. You have a 15 amp going to what could be at least a 50 amp. So what ends up happening is this ends up overheating because it can't take the 30 amps that you're trying to push through it and it ends up zorching and blowing your fuse or it, electricity just stops. Here's the result of that. You see, it got just a little bit overheated and it basically zorched this whole thing inside here. And even though the wire inside here is rated for a lot higher amps, this type plug is not. After you end up pulling these things apart, which they're practically welded together, so it'll probably go <laughs> And you can finally rip the things apart, but uh, you, I mean, this is fried, so this is this is probably going in the garbage. This should have never have been invented, um, or maybe temporary use only. So now I've got the job of replacing the parts on this, and because I want this to still have uh, to be able to plug in to small uh, appliances like an angle grinder or whatever. I still want it to have the 115 volt uh, setup, um, and even though the wire can take a whole lot more. Now, what's the advantage of having this big thick wire? Well, the big thick wire doesn't heat up, and there isn't a big drop of amps or voltage, but really, I've got like a 150 foot long extension cord that's got tiny wires. Um, I doubt that they're even, 14 gauge, maybe 16 gauge. 
and as long as there's not a whole lot of draw of amps to it, it does just fine. Now you can see these wires are pretty monstrous. Um, they're at least, uh, I'm going to say that's probably about an 8 gauge or at least a 10. So I'm going to start by, wow, I can barely fit these even in my wire strippers. Start by stripping the ends. When you're putting a new plug on there, make sure that the ground wire, which is normally colored green, goes into the normally colored green grounding spot and make sure that you really crank those things down. Now the black wire, here's a quiz, where does it go? Does it go to the nickel plated looking screw or does it go to the copper plated looking screw? Bing, you're right. It goes to the copper plated one. So the black will go to the darker colored plated uh, screw and the white or the common will go to the lighter colored or the nickel plated screw. Okay, so there you have it. So what's the point of all this? My point is don't waste your money buying this gigantic extension cord that only does 15 amps. Go ahead and make your own if you want a larger amp draw, such as to a fifth wheel. If you want a 30 amp draw, don't use 15 amp plugs. This is an example of an extension cord that I just built. It is eight gauge wire and it has the very large blades. Um, and this is 110 but it's capable of up to um, 30 amps, which is what my fifth wheel uh, is maximum capacity is a 30 amps. So with these large blades, of course you have to have a plug that's wired in 110 and that the uh, circuit breaker going to it is at least a 30 amp circuit breaker and it only goes to this one outlet. And here's the other end, has uh, of course the right connector for it. And this, this cord here is less than 50 feet. It's actually probably about only 40 feet if that. So eight gauge wire coming this far uh, as far as an extension cord is uh, not a big deal. Of course I keep this in a dry area which is underneath the trailer sitting on top of um, that piece of aluminum there. And this keeps everything pretty well outdoor safe, even though I don't recommend a metal box. That's what I had at the time. So I was able to fix it. Now, when you're building an extension cord, make sure that you actually look at the package um, so that you buy the right one for the right purpose. This one, although it has giant blades on it. You can see that one is smaller than the other and they're straight and not curved. Uh, this one is actually for 220. So it has two 110 lines going to it. There'll be four lines inside here. One ground, um, two power, one common. Um, so be careful what you're doing and these are these are coded in the way that they are so that you don't accidentally plug something into it that you shouldn't so pay attention to what application that you need it for uh, this happens to just go to my 220 welder um, and uh, works good last long time again this will take a lot of amps because the blades are really pretty big All right, so this is has been rebuilt. Um, 
Here's an issue there too, you see that? The ground plug is gone. Okay, that just puts a little extra safety there if that ground plug is there so that you don't get zorched. So with that ground plug gone, you know what, it's time to replace it with something else. And these are not that expensive. They're, they're fairly cheap, so pretty easy to do that maintenance. And of course, there is the zorched plug way overheated and I wasn't even putting 30 amps of power through that but over time because it's only rated for 15 that's what's gonna happen to it so I had to build another one again these are pretty inexpensive and they're very easy to wire well there you have it I hope that this helps you prevent some of these issues that that I had out here um, Remember your weak length is, is the size of the blades and you want to use the right tool for the right job. Also I wasn't actually zorched <laughs> on this project. In order to uh, create that illusion I used my welder and I put a tool in my hand and uh, touched the welder off for just a second. <laughs> So, a little bit of theatrics. I hope you forgive me. Until next time, I'm Dave Anderson. Be safe and God bless.